Let's uh, carry on with our coverage of the violence in Sudan, the deadly violence that continues now for a third day. The call for international help is growing, along with fears the clashes between those two rival military factions could lead to a full-blown civil war. Naba Mohi is in the capital, Khartoum, with the very latest. The fighting is still erupting in different Sudanese states and cities and towns, including the capital itself. The military and the rabbit support forces right now are battling in the presidential uh, palace and military headquarters and the main airports, uh, Khartoum International Airport and other states airport. On the ground, the military said they are making advances while the RSF, they are claiming they are making advances too, but what it's confirmed that the military uh, is using air force and right now we are hearing aircrafts in the sky of Khartoum. We are hearing explosions, we are hearing bombings. There is 100 people dead and hundreds are, are injured. The situation is chaotic without any sign of a future relief unless huge efforts, international efforts and internal efforts are made to, uh, to, to to calm uh, the warring parties or the warring militaries in Sudan, there is uh, food shortages, medicine shortages, and without humanitarian uh, messages to access those in need in the capital, it's really tense time and it's really bad time for Sudan. Uh, such memory put us back on the memory of the war that Sudanese people are trying to forget by making a peaceful demonstrations that ousted longtime ruler Omar al-Bashir. People are hopeful for this solution, peaceful solution, because the situation is really bad and deteriorating every hour. Naba Muhyiddin for CBC News, Khartoum, Sudan. Now that violence is bringing a call from G7 foreign ministers for an end to the fighting and for renewed talks. Japan is hosting Canada's Melanie Jolie and her counterparts for a second day. The U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken says the G7 is in close consultations on the crisis and the group is reaching out to partners in Africa, the Arab world and international organizations as well. Blinken says there's deep concern over the threat the violence poses to civilians in Sudan and to the wider region.